want to thank God for the opportunity this morning. Last Sunday we were talking about uh, um, the light attitude for restoration. And today I want to speak briefly to us about the assurance of salvation. The assurance of salvation. Uh, the assurance of restoration. One of uh, the topics that we go through uh, for, for discipleship and it's actually the first topic. It talks about uh, assurance of salvation, Pastor Agnes. And I want to thank God for that topic. If you've not gone through discipleship, it is important that you do that. Because sometimes immediately you get saved, you are not sure what has changed and what is likely to change. And I was remembering what happened the first time I got saved. Okay, not the first time when I got saved. You know, I was in school and those times when people were got saved, walikuwa wanaombewa na wanaanguka. So, shida ilikuwa, ukianguka, utaamuka saangapi. So I, I got saved and I went in front like everyone else. I looked left, right, nikaona watu wanaanguka. So I had to fall like everyone else. <laughs> so the problem when I was down there, I didn't know when to wake up. So I didn't know when to wake up. So I didn't know when to so na shida wa mtu anaamukaga nini ikitendeka. Lakini nikaendelea kulala pale chini nikaona ni kama watu haondoki. So mimi niko pale na naangojea ku kuamka nikaona tumeanza kuchukuliwa juu. Juza tumekaa pale chini hatu hatuodoki. Mimi nikachukuliwa juu na wengine na bado nafungua jicho moja niona kama wengine bado wamebebwa. Tukapelekwa rumu ingine ambayo ilikuwa pale kando. Na nikakaa pale kwa muda nikigojea wengine waamke na mimi niamke. Na nilienda kwa room niki, nikijiuliza what has exactly happened. Bwana asifiwe. And though, so that topic of the assurance of salvation is a very important topic. The only first that I knew then was Second Corinthians 5. Is it 17 that says that if everyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And it's one of the verses that we normally taught. And of course I went on learning a few phases time and again except expecting maybe dramatic things to happen that you have gotten saved kujarajia mambo mengine ya kiajabu itedeke kwa sababu nimeokoka ni ile unaenda kwa room na ngoja kusikia sauti ikiongea ya kukuambia sasa wewe umeokoka na nikaendelea kugojea hiyo sauti na haikukuja but I want to thank God because time and again and as I have continued to read the Bible and even to listen to the word of God I have continued to understand and even to obtain the assurance of salvation that even when there is no thunder or even sound when, whether people are falling or not I do not have to fall because everyone else is falling I basically need to do what is right. And therefore, friends, as we talk about the assurance of uh, restoration this morning, my job will be to try and make us understand that restoration is our portion, a initial, like the learned Fred say. That whatever situations we find ourselves in, it is important that we walk in this realization that it is only a matter of time 
before we are restored. Because restoration is a moment of refreshing. You know, it's a moment of favor. It's a moment of being remembered. It's a moment of God visiting you in person. And therefore, like we say last Sunday, when you are waiting for your restoration moment to happen, you must keep the right attitude. You must move out of your comfort zones like Pastor Maina told us sometimes. And be ready to do the extraordinary. So I want to try and help us to understand that restoration is our portion. And we need to walk in that confidence. The Bible says in Isaiah 64, Eight. Oh Lord, you are our Father. Oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. Amen. So we go to appreciate and understand this morning that we are just like clay. And our Lord is the porter. We are the work of his hands. And therefore he has to make us to be fit for purpose. And at times when you are going through things that may not be very exciting, we have to work in the realization that God is making us to be that which he wants us to be. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, 16, that see it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coals into frame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to work half of. My interest is what is in the first part. That it is the Lord who have created the blacksmith. Who fans coals into frames and forges weapons that are fit for their work. And you can imagine if a blacksmith is forging weapons fit for their work. How much is our Lord forging us for, to be fit for the work that he created us for. If you are to talk to the metals that are being forged to be made fit for their work, they will possibly tell you if they, were, they could talk that that experience may not be a very pleasant experience. And you may have seen a blacksmith doing their work. They will take a metal, put it in that fire, it's going to be lead hot, and then they will strike it to make what they want. And sometimes you can even imagine when you have made a tool fit for a certain work and it ends up not being fit for that work. What the blacksmith will do is that he will turn that tool back into the fire. So that eventually that tool can be fit for its work. And that is why, friends, we need to have the right attitude when we are waiting for our restoration to come because it is indeed going to come. You know, the Lord told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.5 that I knew you before I formed you in the womb. Before you are born, I set you apart. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. 
taifa. So I'm trying to put it to you friends this morning. Nataka kuiweka ndani yenu wapendo asubuhi leo. That before any one of us was conceived in our mother's womb. Kabla yeyote wetu ameubika katika umbo la mama zetu. The Lord knew us. Mungu alitujua. And he created us fit for some certain works. Na alitutengeneza vyema kwa sababu ya kazi aliyokusudia. And as a reader of the service elder Solomon told us this morning. Kama vile kiongozi wa ibada alituambia asubuhi ya leo elder Solomon. God did not create us to suffer. Mungu hakutuumba tukaweza kuteseka. His purpose for creating you was not for suffering. Kusudi la Mungu kutuumba sio tukaweza kuteseka. He created you so that you can be able to achieve and accomplish a certain purpose here on earth. Alikuumba ndio ukaweza kufikia kusudi na lengo katika ulimwengu And therefore when things are not happening the way you expect them to happen. You have to walk with the assurance of salvation. You have to walk with the assurance of restoration. Because your restoration will indeed come. One of the verses that I like very much. Is Ephesians 2:10. That says we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. For good works. And I feel he's saying to do good works. And he continues to say. Those good works. Were prepared in advance for us to do. And therefore friends we have to believe that there is some good works that the Lord have prepared for us. That becomes a solid reason for you to believe in your restoration. That if you are in that position that you are trusting and waiting upon God for divine visitation for God to restore you from the situation and the position that you are in you have to walk in that realization that God created you for good works and you have to believe that you are going to fulfill those good works in Jesus name so like we always say there is no season that is permanent there is no season that is permanent. God is coming through for us. In Jesus name. You know when when the Lord the age of the Lord appeared to uh, to Gideon in Judges 6 verse 12. He he told him and you know this was a time when the Israelites were really suffering. They were trusting God for their restoration. And they have been so much oppressed by the Midianites. So much so that the Bible records that they were hiding in caves, in mountain crafts, and even in strongholds. They were so much oppressed. And you could possibly be in the situation that the Israelites were this morning. And I'm here to encourage you friends that God's purpose about your life have not changed the original plan that God has for you have not changed irrespective of the situation that you are in this morning and when the age of the Lord appeared to Gideon at a time when he was so low and the Israelites were looking like they had no hope he greeted him in uh, verse 12 and said the Lord is with you mighty warrior Amen. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And we can imagine someone who is even hiding in a cave and 
the angel of the Lord is calling you mighty warrior. And Gideon was wondering which warrior are you talking about? And he continued to have an, a conversation with the angel of the Lord. And he was asking him if the Lord loves us and all the stories that we have had why has the Lord left us? Why has the Lord left us? And you could be in that position this morning. And you are asking yourself, why has the Lord left me? It reminds me of a story that I mentioned some times back. Of this person who was in very tough situation. And he was walking in the desert. And as you'd walk in the desert, you'd look aside and he would see his two steps and another two steps. And he had the assurance that the Lord is together with me. Because I'm alone and I can see four steps. That was enough assurance that the Lord was with him. But things became more tough. And he was wondering if the Lord is with me, why am I still experiencing this? And it got to a point when he stopped seeing the four steps, he'd only see two steps. And at that point, he made the conclusion that the Lord has left me. And you may be there that this morning. You've been seeing four steps, but you're only seeing two. But I want to encourage you because when this man continued to have the conversation with the Lord, the Lord told him that the steps that you are seeing, they are not your steps, they are my steps. When things became very tough, I put you on my shoulders. So I'm the one who is lifting you and carrying you. If I were not there, you may not even be possibly walking. So the Lord has the ability to lift us and put us on his shoulders when things become tough. And therefore, friends, we have to continue working in that realization that the Lord is together with us. The original plan of God upon our lives have not shifted. The warriors that we were when we were born, we are still the same warriors today. Even when we are waiting for that resolution to come. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. And sometimes when it comes to resolution, it's not about numbers. Sometimes you may be feeling like you are alone, but the important thing is the right company. Because the important thing is for the Lord to be there and to fight your battles. When you continue leading that story of Gideon, and the way the Lord told him to go in the strength that he has, in, in verse 14, the Lord told him to go and deliver the Israelites, and to go in the strength that he had. And that is my challenge to you this morning. That you do not require many things. You do not require a lot of company. You do not require a lot of people to be uh, behind you. You only require God to work with you. You only require to have that assurance of restoration and take the first step. And when Gideon went to battle against the Midianites, he took 30,000 men with himself. And the Lord had at some point to tell him, reduce these numbers. Because at the end of the day, it's not going to be about the numbers that you came to battle with. 
going to be about me fighting for you. And the Lord fought for Gideon. And numbers reduced from 30,000. And he went to battle with only 300 men. And I, when I looked at the uh, statistics, that was only 1%. And so, friends, you may not even require all the energy. You do not require to use all the energy that you have. You do not require all the resources that you think you need. If Gideon went to battle with only 1% of the resources that he, he had, and he won against the Midianites. How much about you and me this morning? You do not require the millions that you think you require this morning to win in life. You may not require all the papers that you think you need this morning. When the Lord leaves his face upon you, when the Lord leaves his countenance upon you, Restoration will be your portion. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. So you've got to walk in this realization, friends. That restoration is our portion. And you do not require many other stories. You only to require to believe that the Lord is restoring you. If it is your health that has been charged, if it is your pocket that has been charged, if it is your spirit, if it is your family, you only need to walk in that realization. That restoration is your portion. And it will be manifested in Jesus' name. Number two, why we need to have the assurance of restoration is because the Lord has his eyes on us. His eyes are on us. And when the Lord's eyes are on you, you can be sure nothing is going to go wrong. When the mother's eyes are on the child, you can be sure that child will be saved. And the Bible says in Isaiah 49, 15, that can a mother forget the baby on her breast? Can she forget the baby that she has born? You know, it is very hard for mothers to forget their children. And that is why the Bible is putting this as a question. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? If you are to ask the women in the house, they will tell you it is very hard for them forget their children. And I want to believe you are to talk to the fathers in the house. They will equally tell you the same. So it is very hard for a mother to forget a child. And the Bible continues to say that in as much it is very hard for a mother to forget her baby that the Lord will not forget us that even though a mother may forget the Bible says that the Lord will not forget us. So friends, it is important for us to have that assurance. That even when sometimes things are very tough, the Lord is together with us. His eyes are firmly on us. And if you look at verse 16, it says, 
inasema. If you can look at verse 16, it says that I have engraved, engraved you on the palm of my hands. And your walls are ever before me. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Amen. So even at a time like that when you think you are going through very tough situations, we may not be there to support you. We may not be there to give you a word of encouragement. If we try, we may come once or twice. But I want to give you an assurance this morning that you have company that never departs. You have eyes that are always family on you. And therefore you do not require anything else. If the Lord's eyes are family on you, you only need to walk with the assurance that tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow will be better for me. This situation is changing. It's only a matter of time. And I'm just about to give a testimony. In Jesus' name. Number three, why we need to have the assurance of salvation. It's because it's the nature of God to restore. It's the nature of God to restore. And at times we do not even require to do much. We do not require to do much. It's the nature of God to restore. And that is the reason why God created seasons. And like we always say, we do not have a single season that is permanent. Verse 7, that I want that person to be brought to me quickly. That I may show him kindness for, my, uh, uh, for, 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 for the sake of uh, Jonathan, my friend. And so uh, this guy was brought from Lodiba. And he was brought before King David. And of course he could not understand why the king was bothering himself about him. And in verse 7 the Bible is saying, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belongs to your grandfather Saul and you will always eat at my table. Buana asifiwe. Amen. Amen. That is what restoration can do. You may be, you know, forgotten completely at some points. You may be even the lowest in that organization. You may be the least in your family. With even the lowest qualifications. But when your time comes, when the Lord remembers you, things dramatically change. And just like that, Mephibosheth was put at the king's table. And everything that belonged to his father and his grandfather was restored to him. In Jesus' name. And as the Bible says, anyone who is among the living should have hope. No, when Jonathan was brought before the king, he was asking the king, who am I? In fact, he was calling himself a dead dog if you look at verse 8. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Amen. You may not have figured at the level that Mephibosheth was. But if there was hope for Mephibosheth, friends, I want to tell you there is hope for you because that is the nature of our God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9.4 that anyone who is among the reaping has hope. Even a live dog 
dog. Hata mbwa aliye na uhai. Is better off than a dead lion. Yako bora zaidi kuliko si ba aliyekufa. Najua kuna maneno mengine inasikikaga kama ni matusi. Mm. Lakini hii ni Biblia inasema hata mbu alio hai mm -hmm. ni bora kuliko eh? siba baya amekufa bwana asifiwe amen so if you are there this morning kama uko pale asubuhi ya leo and you are in that state and you are asking yourself what is good about me unko katika hiyo hali unajiuliza ni nini bora kuhusu mimi i want to encourage you friends nataka kuatia guvu wapendwa that there is hope for you yako ba kuna tumaini kwa ajili yako and your restoration is about to come na urejesho wako ukaribu kufika you only need to be like that liver unafaa kuwa katika kama ule mto that continues to say ule unaendelea kusema my season is just about to come majila yangu ikaribu sana kufika in jesus name katika jina la yesu number 4 why we need to walk with the rest uh, why we need to believe in restoration ya ina ni kwa nini tuamini katika hali ya urejesho is because god has promised to fight our battles ni kwa sababu mungu ametuhakikishia ametupatia ahadi ya kupigana vita vyetu god has promised to fight our battles mungu ametuahidia kupigana vita vyetu so we need to go to the battlefield kwa hivyo tuwafaa kwenda katika vita vya uh, kiwaja vya vita knowing all too well tukijua vyema kabisa it is not about how tooled we are ni si vile kuligana silaha gani ambazo tuko nazo it is about god doing it for us ni kwa ajili mungu anafanya kwa ajili yetu and like we said when we are praying for our candidates kama vile tuliobea tulisema tukiobea candidates wetu in proverbs 2131 kama uh, mithali 31 Uh, na moja, na and moja. the horse may be prepared for the day of battle but victory comes from the lord ya kwa we may be prepared for the battle that is ahead we may be feeling adequately prepared for the battles that we are fighting tunafaa tunajisikia tuko tayari kwa vita ambavyo tunapigana but i want to put it to you friends that victory can only come from the lord lakini nataka kuweka kwenu marafiki ya kwamba ushindi unatokana tu kwake mungu if you look at isaiah 49 verse 24 katika isaia 49 na 9 mstari wa 4 and if you look at the whole of isaiah 49 it was a moment of restoration for israel ukisoma hiyo mada yote isaia 49 na 9 ni kuhusu urejesho wote wa wana wa israeli And they had gone through a very tough moment. Walikuwa wamepitia wakati uliokuwa mgumu sana. They had been prodded by the enemy. Walikuwa wamepigwa na kuagadamizwa na adui. And in first 24 it gets to a point where they are, when they are asking. Wakati kama mstari wa 24 inafika mahali wanauliza. Can prada be taken from warriors or captives rescued from the fears? You know is you you are that point when what you have have been taken away. Uko katika ile hali ya kwamba chochote ulikuwa nacho kimechukuliwa. You have been taken away. Watu wako wamechukuliwa kutoka kwako. You know just like uh, uh, Pastor Josiah was preaching to us on Wednesday. Kama vile mchungaji Josiah alikuwa anatuhubiria Jumatano. When David went to battle and came back to find his family and everything taken away. Waka Daudi aliada katika vita kurejea akapata jamii yake na kila kitu kimechukuliwa. The family and everything they had had been taken jamii yake yote na chochote walikuwa nacho kidogo kimechukuliwa and they were almost at the same point with the israel's asking can prada be taken from warriors na walikuwa mali and captives rescued from the fears walikuwa mali pamoja na waisraeli wakiuliza chochote kimechukuliwa kinaweza tokeza kutokolewa kwa wachujaa na walipo wameokolewa wa, wa rejeshewe and i want to tell you friends nataka kuambia wapendwa that when it's a moment of restoration for you kama ni wakati wa urejesho wako when we are in the moment of restoration wakati uko katika hali ya urejesho the prada will be taken back abaya ni mnyanya abaya imetolewa kwako italejeshwa the captives will be rescued waliofungwa wataokolewa and the bible records in first 25 of isaiah 49 na maandiko yanaku katika 49 and this is the lord answering that yes in fact it says but this is what the lord says so it is god himself speaking ni mungu mwenyewe anazungumza and the lord is speaking even to us this morning na mungu ananena nasi hata asubuhi ya leo concerning that which has been taken away from you kuhusu kile ambacho kimetolewa kutoka kwako and the answer is in the affirmative na ajibu liko katika hali ya usawa that yes dio captives will be taken from warriors and prada retrieved from the fears 
wa mateka wataokolewa kutoka kwa unyanyasi wao na chochote kimetolewa kirejeshwe. Restoration is our portion friends. Urejesho ni sehemu yetu wapendwa. The Bible continues to say. Biblia endelea kusema. That I'll contend with those who contend with you. Yakoba nitapigana na naopigana na wewe. The Lord is saying I will contend with those who contend with you. Biblia inasema nitapigana na wanye wanapigana kinyume na wewe. And your children I will save. Na watoto wako nitawaokoa. What for the assurance do we need friends? Je, ni uhakikisho mungani ule tuahitaji wapendwa? If the Lord has promised to contend with those who are contending with us. Kama Mungu ametuahidi kupigana na wabao anapigana nasi. And has promised to save in, even our children. Na ameahidi kuokoa hata watoto wetu. What further assurance do we need? Je, ni uhakikisho mungani tuangojea? And the Bible also says in Isaiah 54:15. Na Biblia pia katika Isaia 54:15 that if anyone does attack you na kama mtu abata, kama kuna yote atakushabulia it will not be my doing haitakuwa matendo yangu and whoever attacks you will surrender to you na yule aba ameshabulia wewe atanyenyekea chini yako whoever attacks you friends will surrender to you aba amekushabulia atanyenyekea chini yako so you need to walk with this assurance kwa hivyo afa tutebee katika uhakikisho huu that the solution is our portion ya kwamba urejesho ni sehemu yetu we need to walk with this assurance afa tutebee katika uhakikisho huu that the solution is our mo- is, is, our, is our portion ya kwamba urejesho ni sehemu yetu and i know it it speaks louder and clear to the people who need to be restored na njua inazungumza zaidi na kwa sauti kuu kwa watu ambao wanahitaji urejesho those are the people who understand the lyrics wao ndio wanaelewa lyrics like someone said kama mtu vile alisema when times are good wakati mambo nyakati ziko bora we enjoy the music unafurahia wimbo but when times are bad lakini nyakati ziko kuwa bovu we understand the lyrics tunaelewa maneno so the people who are in the point of requiring the restoration wale watu wako katika hali ya kugojea urejesho are the people who understand the lyrics about you anaelewa maneno ya matamshi yenu but i want to put it to you friends this morning nataka kuweka kwenu wapendwa asubuhi ya leo we all need to be in a position of understanding the lyrics yafaa ukue katika hiyo hali ya kuelewa maneno because it's possible to understand the lyrics and still enjoy the music ni vyema kuelewa maneno pia kufurahia wimbo mwenyewe in jesus name katika jina la so we serve a god who is ready and, and lead and willing to fight our battles tunatumikia mungu ako na utayari wa kutupiga ni vita and when that gets into your mind na wakati hiyo itaingia katika mawazo yako you do not require anything else hautahitaji chochote kile you will put your trust in the lord utaweka tumaini yako kwake mungu you will be like that season oliver that we talked about utakuwa kama ule mto wa majira ambao tulizungumzia you will be like that tree that the bible talks about in jeremiah utakuwa kama ule mti biblia inazungumzia katika elemaya that is planted by the rivers about me pando kando ya mto that continues to spread its roots by the stream inaendelea kuweka mizizi yao kando ya mto and the bible says it does not fear when the heat comes biblia inasema haiogopi wakati joto linakuja and it has no worries in a near of drought haitakuwa na kufadhaika wakati wa kiangazi because it continues to bear fruit kwa sababu inaendelea kuzaa matunda that is our portion friends hiyo ndio sehemu yetu wapendwa that even when we are waiting for restoration hata wakati tuna goja urejesho we can remain fruitful tunaweza kukua katika hali ya kuzalisha matunda we can remain fruitful tunaweza kuwa tunaza matunda because we know the lord that we serve kwa sababu tunajua mungu ambaye tunatumikia in jesus name katika jina la yesu what happens when the lord finally restores you je kinatendeka nini wakati mungu anakurejesha kamili when the lord restores you he will give you a new name wakati mungu anakurejesha atakupatia jina jipya he will give you a new name atakupatia jina jipya i want to believe that the name that mephibosheth used to be known by changed when he started sitting at the king's table nataka kuamini yako ba jina ambalo amefibosheza alikuwa anaitwa alilibadilika wakati aliishi katika meza ya mfalme because there are names sometimes we are given out of our situations kwa sababu kuna majina ambayo tunapatiwa kulingana na hali zetu there are names that we are given out of what we are going through kuna majina tunapatiwa kwa sababu ya mambo ambayo tunayapitia but friends that is not your real identity hiyo ndio sio hali yako ya utabulizi your real identity we said is defined in the 
Ephesians 2:10. Kujulisema kwamba utaguliza wako uko katika Efeso. God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Kazi bora ya mikono ya Mungu ambayo iliubwa katika hali ya huko kwa kazi iliyo bora. Everything else is not your identity. Ile hali yote sio utabulisho wako. So when God comes through for you. Wakati Mungu atakuja kwa ajili yako. Your name is going to change. Jina lako lazima litabadilika. As it happened to the Israelites when the, when God came through for them. Kama ilivyotendeka kwa mtika wa Israeli wakati ali Mungu alikuja kwa ajili yao. You look at Isaiah 62 from verse 2. Katika Isaia 62 mstari wa 2. We will see the name changing. Tutaona majina yakibadilika. Zion had been branded. Zion imeitwa jina ingine. Things were very tough for them. Jina mambo yalikuwa magumu sana kwao. But the Lord says when their righteousness is restored. Biblia inasema wakati haki yao itarejeshwa. The nations will see your righteousness. Mataifa yataona haki yako. And all kings your glory. Na ufalme wote utakuwa na utukufu. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. The new name will even come from the mouth of the Lord. Jina jipya litatoka kutoka kwa kinywa chake Mungu. The other names will come from our mouth. Majina mengine yatatoka kutoka na vinywa vyetu. We will give you names based on what you are going tutakupatia majina kulingana na mambo ambayo unayapitia restoration moment comes lakini wakati wako wa urejesho utakapofika the new name will come from the mouth of the lord jina lako jipya litatoka kutoka na kwa kinywa chake mungu and if you read on ukiendelea kusoma it says in verse 3 katika mstari wa 3 you will be a crown of splendor in the lord's hand Bwana asifiwe. Amen. A loyal dear them in the heart of your God. Amen. Majina yote mazuri sasa itakuwa inaitwa wewe. Wewe. You know we talk about uh, all the good names. Tunazungumzia kuhusu majina yote mazuri. God has the capability to also give you good names. Mungu ako na uwezo wa kupatia majina yote mazuri. And names that are nice sounding. Ni majina ambayo yanatamka. A loyal dear them in the heart of your God. Katika hali ya kiungu kuhani katika mikono yake Mungu. Fiwe. Amen. This is our portion friends when the Lord restores us. Hiyo itakuwa sehemu yetu wapendo wakati Mungu atatulejesha. And if you keep reading. Na ukiendelea kusoma. Verse four talks about uh, no longer will they call you deserted. Amen. You know people may have been calling you deserted. Watu wanaweza kuwa umekuita ule aliachiliwa. But the Bible is saying no longer will they call you deserted. Lakini Biblia inaendelea kusema hautaitwa tena aliyeachiliwa. You will be called all your name be called desolate. Na jina lako liitwe kuharibika. You are getting a new name. Unapata jina jipya. You are getting a new name. Unapata jina jipya. You be called Heziba. Utaitwa Heziba. And you are lad Beulah. Na jina na nchi yako itaitwa Beulah. You know nice sounding names. Maneno yabana yanatamka sawa. That people may have to look at the dictionary. Watu watatafuta katika kamusi. To try and understand what those names mean. Kujaribu kuelewa yanamaanisha nini. And my Bible says Heziba means my delight is in her. Mimi Bible yake inasema ya kwamba Heziba inamaanisha furaha yangu iko juu yake. Beulah means the one who is married Beula inasema aliyeolewa So you may not have even been married Unaweza kuwa bado haujaoleka And people have given you a name based on your status Na watu wamekupatia majina kulingana na hali yako But from the mouth of the Lord Lakini kutokana kwa kinywa chake Mungu Things are changing Mambo yanabadilika Things are changing Mambo yanabadilika And even your lad will be married Na nchi yako itaitwa kuolewa In Jesus name Katika jina la Yesu So friends you do not have to be worried by the names we are giving you do not have to worry by the labels they are putting on you. You have only to be concerned by the label that is coming from the mouth of the Lord. And when the label that comes on you from the mouth of the Lord comes, it's going to be nice sounding. Things will have changed for you kwa ajili yako and the lord will be your delight na mungu atakuwa furaha yako when the lord remembers you wakati mungu atakukumbuka he will give you laughter and joy atakupatia furaha na kicheko joy may have escaped you for a long time furaha inaweza kuwa imekutoroka kwa muda kiasi you may not have been able to laugh for a very long time unaweza kuwa hujakuwa na furaha ama kicheko kwa muda mrefu but when the lord comes through for you lakini mungu 
Your story is going to change. Like we are seeing in Psalms 126 from past 2. Psalms 26 we can lead from past 1. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, when the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, Amen. remember we started by saying in Isaiah 49, 25, that it's possible for the captives to be brought back. And even for the Prada to be restored. And here the Bible is telling us that when the Lord brought the back the captives from Zion, we were like men who dreamed it was so good to be lil. I don't know whether you have ever been in that position you are looking at things and this doesn't look like it's a reality. You've been try, trusting God for a partner in marriage. And a time comes when you are holding someone and you are saying this is mine. Amen. You, your pockets have been empty for a long time. And God just comes through for you. And your wallet is suddenly full. You look like someone who is dreaming. You look like someone Hata ukienda nyumbani na nyama unaenda na ile inaanza na jina M. Mungu anafika mahali anakubariki. Eh? Unaenda pale kwa butchery. You know when um, one of the things that uh, I, I I used to do sometimes back. I do not do now these days. Kuna mambo nilikuwa nafanya pale awali lakini sifanyi saa hii. Unajua kuna nyama ukinunua inakuwa na madharau kidogo. Mhm. Mm I don't know whether you have ever gone to a butchery. You know, there is a man who is in the middle of the But he has been in the middle of the way. He has been in the middle of the way. He has been in the middle of the way. He has been in the middle of the way. He has been in the middle of the way. He has been in the middle of the way. Mm -hmm. Una, unajua kuna nyama ina, ina nunuluwa wa na waze. Mm -hmm. Because uh, men know uh, the, the kind of, you know, it's not all the meat that is the same. Si nyama yote ina kuanga yeah. sawa. Kwa hivyo, unafika pale ukua na uwezo, mm -hmm. unasema pale utakatiwa. Amen. Ya fifte, unachukulia wa hile iko hapo. <laughs> na inafugu wa haraka. Yeah? So mungu anakutoa mahali pa kuzua nyama hile imekato hapa. Mm -hmm. Wewe unasema pahali utakatiwa. Amen. Buwana asifue. Amen. That is possible to happen. It Iyo can ni, happen to you, friends. When the Lord wapede. remembers you. Wakati mungu wana kukubuka. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion. Wakati mungu wana mateka pale za yuni. We were like men who are dreaming. Tulikuwa kama watu wa ulikuwa wanaota. It was too good to be true. Ilikuwa bola sana. Ilikuwa mzuri sana. That the Zion, kama kuwa the ukeri. captives had been brought back. Wakati mateka walikuwa merejeshwa. I mean, uh, this week. I have not watched the news a lot, but there is a time I saw uh, in the news in Israel saying, I mean, in, uh, in CNN, saying that uh, there were some Americans who had been held captive by Hamas who had been released, isn't it? Mm, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. it may not have made a lot of sense to us. But if that was your brother or sister, your husband or your wife, it would have seemed too good to be true. And if Hamas was released, what about your blessing that the enemy is holding? Yes. 
fulfill it. Kama Hamas wanalilizi mateka. You are blessing that the Lord is holding. Or you are blessing that the enemy is holding friends. It's just about to be released in Jesus name. And when that happens. When that happens. You'll be like someone who is dreaming. It will be looking too big to be true. The Bible says in verse 2, our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. God is just about to fill your mouth with laughter. He's just about to fill your tongues with joy. Because your restoration is just about to come. And your restoration will come in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It will happen in Jesus' name, friends. We serve a God who is able. When your restoration comes, people will testify on your behalf. They will testify on your behalf. If you look at the first that we are reading from verse 2, it is saying uh, that it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. And verse 3 says, the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. The nations are the ones that are testifying that the Lord has done great things for them. Your neighbors will be the ones testifying that the Lord has done great things for you. Your cynics will be the one testifying that the Lord has done great things for them. And that moment is just about to happen. In Jesus' name. And the last one as we cross friends. When the Lord restores you, your portion will be double. Your portion will be double. We saw that when we were looking at the case of a job. His portion was doubled. And if you look at the Bible in Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 from verse 7. Bible says that instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion. Amen. Instead of my of their shame, they will receive what? They will receive a double portion. And instead of their disgrace, they will receive what? They will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs. Amen. Amen. So where you have suffered shame, where you have been in disgrace, when your restoration comes, and this restoration we have said we are assured of, when it eventually comes, you will receive double portion. Instead of shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, joy will be yours. In Jesus' name. Therefore, as we conclude phrase our prayer this morning, as in Psalms 126 verse 4, as in Psalms 126 verse 4, that the Lord may restore our fortunes. That restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the streams in the Negev. 
That is my prayer for you this morning. That may the Lord restore your fortunes. May the Lord restore my fortunes. Anything that the enemy has taken away from us. Anything that is being hindered from locating us. This morning we are declaring. May the Lord restore it in Jesus' name. As the Bible says in Isaiah 43, from verse 2, that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That is the assurance that we are continuing to get. That as we wait upon this Lord with the light attitude and the assurance of salvation as praise and worship team comes on stage as we wait for this Lord even as we pass through the waters I will be with you when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The frames will not set you abreast. Because the Lord is restoring your fortunes. Like the streams of Negev, your fortunes are being restored. In Jesus' name. So we must walk home with that assurance that we are being restored. And that is our portion. And we are assured of that restoration. In Jesus' name.